Welcome back, everyone, to LCS Challengers and game number three just done. FlyQuest able to bounce back and take it from Team Liquid Challengers. But this brings us to a little bit of a segment we like to run known as the Subway Best of Five sidekick. No longer best of three. I know there's the churro, the cookie, and the, uh, the pretzel. Well, uh, combine them in some way. Make a humunculus if you want to get the other two going in. But now we got to talk about champion picks. And Kelsey, I want to start with you. Are there any picks that you think uh, that you want to see coming into this game number four, given we're so deep into Fearless? And in fact, let's pull up those Fearless bands real quick so we can at least have those because it's been a lot of picks so far uh, in the series. Yeah, I think for me, there's a lot of good picks that are, are signature picks because I want players to be able to pop off, right? So uh, when I think of Fly C, though, I would really like to see a Shaden Nidalee game. I'm probably not going to get one, Whoa. but that was that's like a, a throwback from ages and ages ago. Uh, one of the first games that I saw him play where I thought, man, this guy has something special. It was Nidalee. So um, I would like to see that come through. I doubt it's going to happen, but you know, I think we're due for a good pop-off Shaden game. I was going to go with Serdi Camille, which I know he's going to tell me that champ is trash. So uh, but I would have, I would have, I would have gone with that. But he had the pop off all off, all off game, so I've got to give what, it to the what about, really. what about a support Camille? You know, if we get really down in the trenches, I've seen some blood song Camille still being a thing even after the nurse. Um, I mean, I, honestly, Kelsey, my kind of joke answer for this all split <laughs> has been Yorick because I think that champion is on yep, a board, busted. and some some of the numbers that Yorick has right now are undeniable. And you never know, mm -hmm. like in a split push game, going up against something like Cassante, Yorick kind of dunks that pick later on. Probably not going to be the case, but, you know, I'm going to be sticking to my guns here, uh, as why not? You know, let's see if Yorick rises from the dead and it gets to be the Undertaker on the Rift. I know that's yeah. what I would appreciate that reference. What do you got, I, Eric? What's I would point? very much appreciate it. First of all, I got to rate your guys' picks first. I'm going to give okay. Kelsey the churro because I think there's a little bit of spice in that. I think there's a lot of there spice is. in that. And cinnamon is <laughs> that's a true, spice. True. Um, also, I really wish Rafa was here to hear that in Italy thing because I know he would go absolutely <laughs> nuts over it. <laughs> now, for Cubby, you're kind of the pretzel. That's okay. it. That's all so I really you, got. You just want to be the cookie. What do you have for the cookie, Eric? <laughs> what do I have for the cookie? Okay. Okay. So it's kind of known that I love it when mid laners picked this because I was so excited whenever we saw Shochi pick it last year. And Romer, in his first few games, was uh, one of the proponents for it. And yes, it is Tristana. Got I would like to see game. that uh, it's, return it's to the rift. Bad, yeah. I would like to see Romer play it, even if it's banned. You know, we just ignore the ban and pick it anyway. But. <laughs> yeah, that, that is my cookie pick. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Is, is, is it a good one? Not bad? Oh, it's a good one. It's probably also the most realistic. We'll <laughs> see. And it's 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 a little something sweet, right? To 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 finish off the day. So yeah. um would be would be great to see it come through. And as the range extends, eventually, as Triss gets into like level 18 and so often, her range actually matches on your screen the length of one of our footlong sidekicks. So uh, it plays more to the brand, you know? Yeah. I, I I do appreciate that, Eric. I think, I feel like that's a good one. But, uh, hey, uh, we are now in unexplored territory, you know, when it comes to oh, yeah, uh, a, a fearless draft. We are in game four. We have not seen this. Champion polls are even further narrowed. Uh, I think something that we've brought up a lot of scenarios where sometimes, you know, like I expect teams to have Viego comps prepped. Um, we also sometimes see bot lanes. Uh, that, you know, given all the bot lane bans that we have, sometimes you just see a Zyra Rakan appear because that's something that a lot of players have practiced and it's just a very strong duo. Uh, wouldn't be surprised now to see TLC maybe threaten that for the next game given a spawn's a very good Zaya player historically. But Kelsey, we've also seen a, a big whack of Kaisa in this series. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Kaisa no. either. No? <laughs> You're out? I mean, <laughs> at, th at this point, it's definitely going to happen, right? Yeah. Um, for sure, especially at least... So Jed loves the Kaisa. Um, it's a very comfortable pick for him. So um, with us getting deep in the, the weeds on the ADC picks, uh, it's, it's definitely going to come out. I'm not the biggest fan of Kaisa, but, uh, you know, it's, it's going to get played. Maybe if the Smolder gets unbanned, we'll see the Smolder versus Kaisa redemption I you, arc. I don't think you unbanned Smolder at this Kaisa. point. <laughs> yeah, the last thing you want to do mean, in Fearless Draft is ban Smolder for four games and then lose to Smolder game five. That's like the most mental damage that could possibly be dealt. Or you first pick the Smolder because all of the, the lame bully ADCs are down. 
Well, that, you know? that that is true, but that's even more reason for Smolder to never leave the band list. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> as, uh, oh my God, I didn't even know this is what our overlay did. I, I didn't know that it dropped down here uh, for the yeah. Fearless bands. That, that's how unexplored this is. As we have a side swap, Kelsey, for the first time in the series. Oh yeah, we have a TLC, I'm, I'm guessing, chose the it red chose side red. here, which... Wow. I mean, if I'm TLC, that looks good to me because I'm winning off of having winning lanes the last two games, at least until I lose. Uh, mm. Shout out, Skara. But uh, we're, we're we're prioritizing counter pick here. Kelsey, that's a Zeri ban. I think yeah. that we're going to see... I mean, I think TLC is actually in really tough shape with Fearless because they don't have access to Talia. YC does. And then we have Smolder yep. and Varus available. So I think that we see YC actually first pick Varus Yep. And then also yep. go for a Tawia here, uh, which is very good into Smolder if TLC wants it. Uh, and I know that we haven't seen TLC play Smolder yet, but uh, it is something that Spawn has played a lot on his solo queue account, as you highlighted earlier today, Kelsey. Yep. And then there is the Varus first pick. It banned both game, but all three games previously on by Red on Fly C. That was a weird salad, but you guys got the point. Anyway, we're going to see what they pick into the Varus here because a lot of the strong level one champs are no longer available. So it is a smolder, like here you suggested. Be right there. Oh boy. This always gets terrifying to me, especially uh, when you have such a strong first pick because yeah. a lot of the angles to take down smolder has just been body him in the early game before he even gets scaling. Well, I, I will say that some of the good pairings with smolder We've mostly seen Nautilus and Tom Catch on the LCS yep. stage. Braum is one of the last few really good ones. Uh, so I want to see Fly C take something that isn't too vulnerable into a Braum, like a Blitz or the Ona pick. I wouldn't like here. I really like, I think Vi pick is 100% necessary because if you leave up Vi Talia, you would have Fly C run Vi Talia, and I'd be really scared for that Smolder in that game. I also do think I'm of kind of the personal opinion that the best way to beat Smolder is actually to beef up your front line. Because if you get to the point where Smolder has 225 stacks, he catches up in strength to your ADC. But if your front line is behind, like then you still bowl through the front line. It is the Shaden Kindred coming out. I, we I like love to see it. It is absolutely I... fantastic. Great into Vi. Also gives you a lot of range uh, if you get your stacks off and you have mm -hmm. Pryo. Um, versus the Smolders, you're guaranteed at least one lane of, lane of Pryo, most likely, in this situation. So you get your stacks up, you get a longer range, and then you basically outplay the, the Smolder in team fights. Yeah, and Talia pairing as well, making it a little bit tougher for Vi to go in. She has to start with R now. Harder to start with Q mm -hmm. if that Unraveled Earth is available. Uh, and also, the Lamb's Respite uh, defense against Smolder is rather nice, but TLC... We saw Corky and Huey removed from Romer. I think Huey is going to come out here, Kelsey, uh, as yep. that is a lot of range to throw into the range that Fly C is already showing. Yeah, I mean, Huey is definitely an explosive pick. It will help you a little bit with the prior situation, but I do think the Kindred pick is pretty good into it because you yeah. have ample notice before the, the Huey ulti comes out to... to basically absorb that damage so uh a lot of the the dynamic of the game already is going to be playing around that kindred ult in terms mm -hmm. of fl tlc's tools and how tlc wants to play out uh, before i throw it to eric i will say that uh the way for romer is 2-0 and this playoffs and it's had some really big games uh so he, his way game in each series was really big and we'll see what we can do in his way game for this one I mean, it's going to be uh, one of the biggest possible because this is still a uh, match point coming out for FlyQuest Challengers. And I really do like what they have. You already uh, paid a lot of attention towards that Varus, uh, towards the Talia and what they can do to this Smolder, as well as the blocking with the Lamps just bite to not PLC allow Smolder to get those executes. So, so far, so good from uh, FlyQuest. I really do I, like the setup yeah. they have for the early. I, I think the Braum ban, I, I think it's something that TLC, they don't want to blind it at support. Uh, but the fact they removed it just from the double marksman, like Varus Braum, also a very good pairing. I mean, this is going to get interesting with the support pool, especially Kelsey. Like, we're at the point where I think Rel becomes a really big pick here. Uh, like, it can kind of hold the line uh, uh, for Smolder. And I think that for Fly C, it could be more engaged and set up for the Talia Kindred. I wouldn't be surprised to see Rel for Chime. 
Uh, I think Rel could be an option uh, with with the combo setup. I think Alistar still exists. Like Alistar, Alistar makes. No, you pick Alistar this game. Yeah, yeah screw the Rel. Yeah. This is a cow game for Chime. You Alistar, get control yep, over Mazur Spite. Yeah. And into Blitzcrank, into the Vi. I think yeah. it, it has a, a ridiculous amount of value here. The only concern is obviously you're giving a bit of an easier lane to the Smolder, but if you're roaming top as. as the Alistar and you're finding leads and you're finding a good advantage mm -hmm. there, you're helping the Kindred, you're playing around the map like that, then it's very huge. And if you're playing Blitzcrank blind, you never want to hook the Alistar. You yeah. never want the cow. <laughs> I, I will say, I think Surdy just has to take something that isn't vulnerable to the potential Silas top. Is if you have like Alistar and Narl to grab, then Silas <laughs> top actually could have been really appealing this game. It will be the Aatrox and yeah, Jenkins and are going to come in. So Kelsey, what are your thoughts as we wrap up the draft? Yeah, I mean, I think the the nice thing coming out for TLC is they do have prior top. They should be able to get prior mid, so they do have a side of the map to play around, and they can basically snowball and get to have a strong front line for the smolder as the game goes out. Most of the the game is going to play around the kindred ult. I like the blitzcrank. Alistar is going to have to do a lot of body blocking to prevent the blitzcrank from disrupting the kindred ult because the kindred ult disrupts so much else of what TLC wants to do. So, um, I think both. Ch teams have thought very intelligently about how they want to play this game but of course fly C win because there is no other realistic answer for this you know this is it's just how it's going to be <laughs> all right i got one more question for you before we let you go kelsey and uh head into the mm -hmm. game for tlc you said you like them being on red side because it does give them that counter pick ability do you think they've done enough here in the draft uh, I think they have. I think they've thought intelligently about it. They have two lanes of Pryo, so Vi shouldn't get invaded. Um, Blitzcrank is a good answer to the Kindred. I don't think their yeah. their draft is overall winning, but they do get what has got them success so far, which is lanes of Pryo, winning early game, and seeing what happens from there. All right, we're going to say farewell to Kelsey now as we head into game point, what could be the final game of this series. Uh, not the final game of the day, mind you. We still have Fear versus Merrillville uh, taking place right after this, but the focus is going to be who gets sent to the finals and becomes that $5 team that uh, Kelsey was talking about. Yeah, of course, you can pick up tickets for NACL Finals. It will be on April Fool's, uh, which is not a joke, uh, as 4-1 the day after LCS is in there uh, for their finals. You can see us in studio. And if YC uh, wins this next game, they will be the first team to book their tickets on onto the stage. So hey. big deal, Desirex. Yeah, and, and on top of that, if you're coming out for LCS Finals, stay one more day, bro. Stay one more day for NACL Finals. April Fools. You know, Don't yeah, fall April Fool's. Yeah. Call call out on your boss and let him figure out if it's a joke or not. You got to see NACL. You got to support North American development. Well, this game, I, I am pretty excited to see the Shaden uh, Kindred. The, like, I, I loved how Kelsey was highlighting how, uh, you know, Shaden, one of the big uh, picks he got big on was the Nidalee. Yeah. The other two for me were always the Kindred and the Graves. Uh, and oh, the Graves fact especially, that, yeah. Yeah, that, that he's busting out in this game. I think it's good defense against... Uh, the smolder executes and uh, given that we have a smolder in this game we, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about how important this pick is uh as it is something that uh we've seen warp a lot of games desirux and uh on top of that note I, I i do want to give so much credit over to tlc as a whole as we enter this game three because the expectations they had at the start of season were pretty high now expectations coming into playoffs felt like it was getting on the lower side of things and we were starting to count this team out but no they've turned things around so much both of those games they could have easily taken those fly quest wins they were yeah. so close to making this a technical 3-0 cubby I mean, it was five out of the six Nexus turrets taken in, in the first three games. And uh, to, to be down 1-2, uh, when I say that in isolation, is a bit surprising, uh, given how League of Legends works. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, it's pretty wild how close this series has been. As TLC looking to try and push this to a game five at the moment. Uh, curious, we actually have Keel going for the reverse clear. So going Raptors into Blue Grop, protecting a potential invade from the Varus. And he will beat Ooh. Shaden to this timer. Uh, if he were to go over the wall, that said not being the case, just playing defense in case Shaden went for something uh, like a blue uh, Raptors red to be bot quick. Not the case, though. And he'll have to work his way back, which does leave his bot lane vulnerable here for the next couple seconds. I mean, some of that was preparation for what has uh, what he's been doing for the most part when... Uh... 
We see kill on blue side, which has been time and time again just playing to invade towards that bottom side. Now you have to uh, play for some level of protection for your bottom yeah. lane as it's completely flipped with Sajet and Chime getting priority in the bot. Well, no, in the wise words of Surti, if Shaden's playing Kinder, then I can do whatever and win. So uh, that is something you said <laughs> in, in the interview when they did make it to this stage yeah. of the tournament. And we'll see if Shaden can deliver on his teammates' expectations. Is uh, Shaden? Oh, the 50-50, it's coming up. Heads for him. Ooh. He's got Chime to help him secure this first mark. Gonna feel real nice. And for Shaden, it's always a lot of fun to see him on carry champions. You mentioned earlier, Nidalee, Graves, uh, Kindred that he's currently on. Uh, I remember it was uh, Cloud9 Academy that he first showed up oh, on, yeah. and that was where he started to establish himself as one of the more premier carry junglers on the Graves. He was mostly just kind of adjusting to things by camping up top for Darshan, but as he started yeah. to explore more, we saw the power of Shaden. Uh, real quick, I do want to credit Surti's Thaning. Uh, the wave he actually has frozen is going to force Jenkins TP first. It's not typical for the Aatrox matchup. Uh, the other thing I actually want to say is that, you know, in a way for both Shaden and Keel, these are past most valuable prospects that we've had, at least in terms of candidates. Like, Keel was third in voting last split. I had Shaden personally fourth in my ballot. I think I've listed Shaden on my ballot every single year that he's competed. Yeah. Uh, each of these junglers, you know, they have a lot of game and somewhat for different reasons. Like, Keel has the big champion pool. He's very wide in terms of the strats that he can play, whereas Shaden, it was always like, wow, this guy's the solo queue player that can really round out his play. I think we've seen that, especially this year on this team where Shaden, you know, has kind of taken a back foot. This team's about the soul laners for Fly C. Yeah. But the way that Shaden's been able to play to carry them in games like, you know, playing as Poppy has been great. And now to see him on the Kidder to pick that we know he can play well. well see if they can attack top as Jenkins already down Flash and TP from Surtees Naning on his own. That's, that's huge. What, that's what happens when you have so many good laners on one team. Now Chime and Shaden I mean, he's gonna be laying prey. Jenkins will go into mini form now. Chime waiting to uh, oh boy. pop that headbutt oh, pulverize. That Jenkins did get go. the ward down in time, but Shaden and Chime still going to aggress. The crowd control locks him down, and it's going to be an easy first blood for FlyQuest. That's so good from Surti, Shaden, and Chime. And that's why I love Surti as a player, because not only is he so lane dominant, but he's so good at communicating with his yeah. team what to do. Chime and Shaden having the understanding of that. We're now seeing a bit of the identity from Fly C where they're playing around this top side. And again, I mean, Jenkins was cooked in this lane. He had to burn TP first. He had to burn Flash first. That's not how the NAR Aatrox matchup is supposed to go. Shade and then Chime cash in on the lead that Surti was able to create. On the flip side, Dragon is picked up for the Smolder team. That does buy five minutes for Smolder. It is really good for TLC. But its top lane is already in really tough shape, Tesserux. Yeah, this is going to be terrifying for Jenkins to have to deal with. And, I mean, Shaden's only going to make this worse. He was the recipient of the kill. Again, he's on a, a carry two. jungler, which is the Kindred. Yeah. yeah, he's two marks up already. So this is an ideal start for Kindred. And uh, once Shaden gets up on his uh, momentum, it's hard to stop him from all his uh, bullish. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny because, you know, I, at least we've voted for most valuable prospect already, even though we haven't announced it, Deserex. And I know that I personally, I had to argue for Surti a bit as my vote was the same as Kelsey's. And like part of the reason that I was arguing for Surti as was my pick and candidate for most valuable prospect is just how well he lanes and also how well he's able to communicate with his team. As now, I can see it again as Shaden is already <laughs> back up top. Like, that's a great example of that game. You know, like, not only is he lane dominant, but it's to the point where he's so knowledgeable that he can play it out and yeah. execute it uh, to get his team involved, too, to really push that to another level. It's, oh, that's a big oh. stun. He might be in trouble. Yeah, that's he a great ultimate Keel. coming out from Jenkins. And now Keel showing up. Cease and desist. Looking to come through. Oh, Make that the missed. vault breaker. But Surdy is still able to slide out and buy enough time for Shaden to arrive and try and turn this in favor of FlyQuest. Hops forward on the Jenkins. He's losing too much health, though. Has to flash back out. And now Kill is feeling momentum shift onto his side. The Blitzcrank has been called. Kim down looking for the hook. Will not find it. But it's okay. Jenkins will get Shaden anyway. Heal hit six off the wave. Shaden doesn't have access to Lamb's Respite yet. So even with the grub, Shaden a little bit uh, behind the clear from Keel, who does ding six first, takes him down with the cease and desist. And now Keel kind of back in control of, the, of this jungle matchup. And one of the uh, issues I've had with Shaden throughout the entire season, I think he is definitely one of the best junglers in the league, but over aggression tends to cost FlyQuest some big moments here and there. And that was definitely one of them, unfortunately for Shaden flashing forward. 
would not be able to grab that kill and now FlyQuest with the lead they grabbed oh, they gonna have to make it up and they want to make it up by taking down kill flash forward quad takes them down well played from quad i the hover was there the entire time keel going for the grunt meant that his exit was late quad had mid priority was able to rotate onto keel and now shaden he actually gets another mark off that too so uh, i i think that puts him at three one away now from that four where you really oh that's Jeez. four that's four already Jeez. that's really big four four is the first break point for kinder mark so uh, like even after shading goes down here kill that's really 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 expensive to die uh so yeah two picked up off that play and shaden's really already cruising in this one yeah. that's an incredibly accelerated kindred yeah, right now fast. yeah and this is gonna be hell to pay for tlc him down Wants to make a loan by grabbing Quad. Nice sidestep from Quad. The small jukes coming in, the mind games. Quad wins out. Both mid banners kind of putting on a show a little bit in this series. This has been such a fun series to watch, Death's Rux. Really I know has. that, you know, it, it's so wild because the expectation that we had coming into playoffs was that, you know, Fly C would be in this position, right? One game away from going to stage in the upper bracket, something that no one would be surprised about if you said that at the start of playoffs. But TLC being here and being this competitive with them, was a pretty big surprise if you would have said that at the start of playoffs. And the fact that TLC is really taking it to them like this, like what we've seen out of them, I, I think everyone's really stepped up in the series. And it does feel like a series where I know it's 2-1 on the scoreboard, but I think TLC has been up for the majority of it. And now if I see in this game, this feels like a game that they really have control over early on, Desirux, and what is a match point? I was always very big on uh, Team Liquid when it came down to... Uh performing at these high stress situations and yeah you know when we saw this team announced during the regular season i really did think this was going to be a top three top four team for this season there, there, there's so many players here who you have to give respects to i mean spawn was improving in the last season getting much more calculated with some of his risky plays uh kill was definitely at the top of the list when it came to uh, a lot of conversations as to who's the most valuable prospect in the jungle position so, I mean, with this team coming together, I was excited for them. Uh, it's a shame their season went the way they did, but this redemption song that they've been singing uh, in oh, this yeah. match against FlyQuest has been great. I mean, all sins are forgiven if you uh, perform in the playoffs. Just look at all the C9 fans saying they're back after they 3 0 100 Thieves like it was nothing, you know? <laughs> uh, so uh, it's something where it, it definitely matters. Now, got to return to the map because six grubs are being uh, taken by FlyC, but not for free. Yeah, Chain of Corruption goes out. This might be a trade nonetheless. Yeah, Sajin's oh, able to get one. Trade. Wait, is he even going to be able to get two? Sajin's going to get a double kill. Ooh. What? The, the, the dive went so wrong for TLC, and Sajin is going to cash in. Chimes here. There are no TPs. We're going to make a play on Romer instead. Oh, Romer in a bad way. Seismic Shove will not land. Flash going to be burnt out. FlyQuest are making plays all over the place, Cubby. And that's huge because that dive going sideways, not only is that money into this poke Varus that's looking to one-shot spawn in which the Varus can afford to do this because Kenner will be the DPS, but also that's two people down for the dragon. So TLC can't take the second dragon, which of course buys five minutes for Smolder to continue to scale. So, I mean, Kim down, they couldn't get the wave in. I feel like TLC made this play a little bit too fast. I don't think they had to make this before the wave got in because they could see the fact that Kindred was on the grubs yeah. and that's going to be really expensive because Shaden now has six grubs now is able to pick up this dragon to further delay uh this uh, I should say speed up the game and you know prevent TLC from delaying it now spawned I mean he might even be in trouble here Shaden's looking for everything yeah Shaden coming on the invade Kim Lots down not far off to uh, try and provide some uh, defense over here, but Chime will rather just throw him into the fray. Sajed brings the arrows and Shaden will make him down pay. Weaver's Wall comes in. Quad throwing the rocks will rock the world of Romer oh, no. as he grabs another kill and it's all falling apart for TLC. Oh, Kim down was so close to getting out there, but ends up falling. The Rome too from the Talia. All the Pryo is in FlyQuest Challenger's hands. And they're looking to make this a 3-1, book their tickets to the stage early. I, I asked Chime, you know, before the series about what it's been like being the top team. Because really, FlyC have been our number one team the entire split. And when you were on top, the only thing harder than that is to stay on top. He really credited, you know, no matter what the result was, we always felt like we were improving. We, I had a rookie in Sajed that I had to lead. And even in this series, FlyQuest challengers scaling throughout it. They have to play fast into the smolder and doing just that here as this was a great engage from Chime, Desirex. Absolutely immaculate engage and keeps the pressure coming out 
from FlyQuest. Even Roamer couldn't yeah. escape the damnation that is FlyQuest Challengers, and they're getting closer and closer and closer to booking that ticket to Los Angeles and playing on the Riot Arena stage. And, and even part of the kill on Roamer that came from the bot side failing for TLC, because off the back of that, Chime looked mid with Quad. They got the flash off Roamer, so that time, the bot revisit from FlyQuest Challengers, even less tools were available for TLC. They get a bonus kill off that. And looking at the scoreboard right now, Talia is sprinting towards that Evolve Seraphs. Ooh. Look at where, how far ahead this Poke Varus is. If you get this champion ahead of the item curve, he is so oppressive to deal with. Kindred's ahead too, looking like uh, we have a Collector coming in for Shaden. And now TLC, I mean, they're trying to find picks, but Chimes would be here to answer, and you can take a lot as the Alistar. Chime comes forward with the Hex Flash, and instantly TLC, see the Mad yeah, Cow. Kill, kills hit him they out. want nothing to deal kill with that. Hidden. Uh, and uh, Shaden over in the uh, Dragon Pit. All that being done, Kill was still able to Metal Gear his way down yeah, into that Kill's bush. still in here. I really like Sajed playing all the way back. Uh, it's necessary. If he shows again, though, we could have a base uh, canceled. Ooh. Sajed's got to be careful, but the uh, recall does go through, and FlyQuest start laying prey to the bottom lane as they grab another Scuttle. And uh, dispersing. It doesn't look like they're going to go for the dive just yet, but spawning Kim down, still feel it coming. So they rather just back off and play it safe. Play it safer, Swan. Play it safer yeah. than that. I mean, that's that's the kind of chunk that Kelsey was talking about in draft. If you get ahead as Kindred this mid game, you can just continuously push the pace. You do outrange the Smolder at this point of the game, who isn't that super oppressive champion that we are all mad at uh, when you get the evolve. Not quite yet, right? It's pretty far away from the 225. So, uh, with Shaden showing there, we, we used to have a play for Rift Herald, but I think this is too slow. <laughs> YC should be able to contest this Rift. Love Chime's Hex Flash right there, just pressuring spawn, but Rift Herald, 5k health remains. A win with uh, Sajad, if Sajad's able to get here, but yeah. I think YC might actually uh, not opt to take this and instead reset and try and be first on the map to take the Dragon, which... I must say, going into Smolder, I think that's the right choice, keeping your tempo and making sure that you have first say on the map. Because now you can set up on the bot side. And again, every dragon for TLC, even more value valuable because you yeah. delayed the game for five minutes for this little dragon that they always have on the map to keep on scaling. And, and this bot side setup they can do is going to be pretty hard for TLC to defend because this tower is so low. If they take this before the dragon does spawn, that will open up vision and control the map a little bit more for FlyQuest on this bottom side of the map and make it even more challenging for TLC to defend. Yeah, bot turret being taken. Quan has a nice angle potentially for an alt. He also has a lot of gold in his pocket, so we might see Quad sneak in a base before this spawns, but... Uh, I think more important that TLC is actually funneling Roamer. I favor this trade for them. Yes, they don't have control over the correct side of the map, but I don't even think TLC is going to try and contest this Deserux. I think they know that uh, Smolder's not at the power level. They want Smolder to be at, and they're just going to seed this. That's the struggle bus moment, though. Yeah. Uh, when you fall behind and you oh, don't wow. really have a lane to yourself, uh, you see what happens. You end up getting a Smolder with 225 at like 28 minutes, sometimes even later. And that is one of the most disheartening situations when you need to take fights faster than that. Really interesting. We actually see the Seekers picked up from Quad. That's very early. So that takes away one of the, the Vi alt targets. And I got to say, Vi doesn't really have a good alt target oh. at the moment. Because like, you're going on to a Lamb's Respite. You have an Edge of Night now for Sajed. Like... How does Keel pick the target to go in? It's really tough with uh, how Flyc's uh, itemized so far. So many answers to the cease and desist. Yeah. So Keel doesn't have much of an opportunity to take these fights for TLC. But my question is, Cubby, when do these opportunities start to present themselves for TLC? Well, we'll see if Surdy walks up top because <laughs> he doesn't have a turret. That could be one, right? <laughs> At the moment, Flyc is playing really respectful. On the map, I think Surdy is the best target for Keel. But even then, like Surdy's able to spot him on the ward, and he knows that he has to see this wave. And now Chime's able to respond. So the, the vision game the Fly C is playing, I know Kelsey was talking about it earlier, some of the setup they have. This is a team that, I mean, the, the core should have been LCS. It would have been if EG was in. And now, oh, oh boy, here comes Wait, Chime. What? Oh, it was the chain onto it Kill. It pulled oh, him no. right back over. Kill's dead to right. Shaden will get another mark, Cubby. That was a little funky, a little silly, but uh, Chime ends up really throwing around heal on this Vi, who again, Jeez. really continues to struggle in this game.
As yeah, we're gonna get There's the chain. a replay. The Q flash. Oh. See the chain still connected. Good right call on that the edge of it. Yeah, knocked back. And Keel goes down. Also love Shade in that Q to make sure that he stays within W range. Just get the bonus one. I know it's small. It would have been cleaned up either way, but uh, we like his Kindred for a reason. Now Jenkins trying to stack up Mega, but won't have it in time. Now he's stunned. Oh, Ooh, no. Yeah, he gets pulled back in. He's still able to get one stun out, but there's nothing to be had. Flycos will just finish him off nonetheless. Get a little fatality in there, and the gold lead keeps rising. Yeah, bad to worse here for TLC as Jenkins was fishing. Good chain of corruption from Sajad to prevent any potential outplay from Jenkins. And I mean, this Omer, right now is careful. A... Oh no. Dude, Chime is Not all again. over the place. He's bodying these fools, man. The Mad Cow has the vendetta against TLC. Wow. Kim down will get dropped. And it's another kill for FlyQuest as they dominate. And Chime's Alistar is huge. He has been so good for FlyC all year. And. You know, again, I, I've talked to him before the series. I asked him about being the veteran voice. He is the shot caller, the leader of this team. He takes responsibility for better or worse. And he's like, you know what? Biggest challenge for me has been that, how to be that veteran voice. I haven't been in this position before, uh, but it is something where, you know, he's feels like he's improved a lot and he feels like his calls are a lot clearer. And also, you know, he's checking if they're breaking tempo. And that's something I really want to give FlyC credit for. They have to play fast. They can't give smolder angles in this game. And FlyC... All these recalls that they've had that they've always been first in the map they've yet to break tempo and tlc don't have an answer into them in this game no answers whatsoever 4.6k and we're at seven marks now for this kindred oh boy shaden is off to the races and romer needs to head for dodge because here comes quad he's got a question for romer what's your favorite music mine is rock and roll and romer slain little help uh you know from from the lamb there uh shade and i don't i can't think of a rock and roll reference for that i feel like i'm missing a no, he laid him to there. rest in bedrock okay. there you go okay i mean i was trying to tie kindred in this uh keel <laughs> taking a little bit of a victory lap is that rift Herald is gonna uh get the tower from behind not gonna quite get the crash in though as kill's gonna have to go to the wayside of the game i see they find a successful play on one side of the map and defend the other and this is quad getting solo time with the turret 302. Let's scrubs. take a look at the gold right now. And with six scrubs on top of yeah. it. Uh, I want to see how just far ahead he is. Uh, over 1k in the lead. Just 1.6k for quad. Uh, the bigger thing is going to be Shaden, though. He has been accelerated to holy high hell in this game. 2.2k ahead of kill. I mean, there's not much else he could really ask I, for for a kindred. I, I do, again, I want to return and credit, like Kelsey said in the draft, that, you know, TLC should have two winning lanes in theory. I really want to credit Surdy. He, in the first five mm -hmm. levels, turned that top lane matchup around by himself. He got solo, Jenkins TP, Jenkins flash. That's what got Shaden that first kill. And it's really prevented a way for Kiel to actually play the map because then all of a sudden, top's dead. Guess where Chime looks next? It was mid. Chime was able to then turn around that matchup. So like, Surdy found the solo advantage, but then the way that Chime interacted with his team to turn around both of those solo lane matchups, I think has been fantastic this game from Fly C, and it's the reason why they are in full control. Yeah. And they're a really good team at learning from a lot of those mistakes. I, I, I talked to Surdy about that in the past, yeah. and one of the things he told me was like, hey, we lost that one game in the regular season Supernova. I'm happy about that. I'm happy picking up those losses and learning as much as I can before playoffs come. And Winter it seems like now. right now uh, sure, we have a situation. FlyQuest setting up a siege, looking to try and find a way to break TLC even more. It's just the classic win and learn. Or, yeah, uh, that, that's all it is, you know. We call it uh, the uh, the what's it? Denkai boost uh, over in DBZ, where uh, oh. every time you lose, you you get revived back up, and suddenly you're just stronger because the plot dictates it. <laughs> Gotta give a shout out to Toriyama, man. Yeah, well, you know, I, I like the fact that Pockton takes it. Uh, only issue here for Fly C, they wish that was their soul. Not the case, though, but they traded that first dragon for the lead topside and six grubs. I feel like that's well worth it in the case of this game, but keep in mind that that dragon for TLC buys five minutes for the little dragon to keep on scaling. And if we could get uh, our observer, uh, Kai, to maybe click on Smolder for us, I, we kind of lost track of the Smolder sacks. It is 190, uh, so we are, you know, uh, potentially two, three minutes away okay. from that Smolder Evolve, which is still something that FlyC will have to deal with. I think Alistar, 
Lamb's Respite and the playmaking that FlyC have access to is enough to stop this Smolder. Uh, but it is still something where we've seen enough games uh, where we've seen Smolder just pick up a lot of kills and get really big. So uh, that, that's really the one concern that I think FlyC has that's significant as this game plays out. Right now, FlyQuest getting control of the mid wave while they start to dance around Baron. They know momentum's in their favor. They can dictate the map state the way they please, especially with how aggressive Chime's been playing with some of these engages. Man, whenever the cow shows up, your carries must Dude, run. I, he will catch him. I forgot how good his Alistar was, honestly. Like, it is something where when he was playing with Stixe, when Stixe was kind of like the player positional coach in GG, they were just running people with like the Jinx Alley, Jinx uh, Blitzcrank meta, which was kind of fun. And I, I think that, again, the angles that Chimes had in this game, is just, they, they've been fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, yeah I, I think it's something where as long as FlyQuest can keep on keeping up tempo, not dropping too much, it's still 20 stacks away from Smolder as spawns basing for another item. But Smolder will be evolved by the time the next dragon spawns Deserex, but it, it still is going to be a huge lead for FlyQuest challengers. Still got a while to play the map, and you had spoken a lot about uh, Chime and his veteran voice. Uh, it is a team effort, and what I've heard from Surdy is he will try and figure out where the mid-game tempo is and look for a lot of plays in the name of FlyQuest and be able to uh, shot call and help out Chime to that regard. But we are having a pause, so yeah. we'll see our beautiful faces. For I, I'm actually curious. I know that we still have our guest, Kelsey, uh, on standby. I'd love to get Kelsey's thoughts mid-game Actually, yeah, uh, nice. in, in the pause. I don't know how long this is going to be, of course. Somewhat of a tense moment in the game is I think that next dragon really gonna either dictate that TLC can stall the game another five minutes and get more power on the smolder, or be a scenario where all of a sudden you're going up against an infernal soul with a lot of poke from that poke varus. So uh, I think we're at a pretty critical point of the game. Oh, I mean, it doesn't get much more critical than match point and uh, having your back against the wall that, that devastatingly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this being said, I do want to remind the viewers that this is the upper bracket finals. So if TLC do take a loss in this next game, they're going to the lower bracket. They still have a chance to fight one more game out to try and book their ticket to Los Angeles and compete in the Riot Games arena. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, a drop uh, means that you do have to go through some tough competition. After this, uh, whether we have a fifth game or not, we're going to be broadcasting the Fear versus Maryville match that was supposed to be yesterday. Uh, and they're going to go up against DSG. Uh, whoever wins that, winner of that, will then face TLC or FlyC in the lower bracket to potentially play that best of five to make it. So uh, still a lot of playoff action that we have here on Challengers Desirux. And uh, really exciting to see... Uh, really how things shape up. I think outside of Supernova, the teams that are left, I kind of expected to be left at the start of the regular se or preseason, I should say. Um, and I think that we're going to have like potentially a really competitive playoff. Like Just imagine, we've got the three biggest orgs in TLC, IC, and Disguise waiting for either Maryville or Fear to kind of be that dark yeah. horse. Uh, and Maryville, of course, very powerful in the regular season, proved they can take it to anyone. And they could have a path where they could be trying to go up against Fly C here and that old team for both UG and Spyrax, which would make for quite a fun story here in Challengers. And I mean, that's what made the lower bracket so terrifying early on to this, seeing Supernova and Maraville drop down into the lower yeah, bracket. And now, that was crazy. Yeah, and now it's uh, Maraville who are fighting their way through it. Uh, it's very likely that uh, the winner of this match, uh, the loser of this match, excuse me, will have to face off against Maraville. Uh, considering uh, the results that are coming up, it's just the faith that we really have in this Collegian squad as they were one of the closest to taking that first place spot away from uh, FlyQuest. But getting back into the topic of the match right now, uh, the game state does look pretty done. Do you see any angles in which uh, TLC kind of find their way back in, Cubby? Uh, not sure, but we're going to bring Kelsey in actually to talk to us. So I'd love to get some of her thoughts. Uh, as we're going to bring Kelsey back. Kelsey, uh, you know, it's a good time to have your Fly C bias on the desk. It's rather a, a big lead going up against this. Build it up. Build it up. Oh, oh, we got a muted Kelsey. It's all right. She's making me feel better right. about the it's start fine. of the show when I was muted. So thank exactly. you, Kelsey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she got yeah. my Yeah, that was back. totally intentional. Um, but yeah, I mean, oh, it's I, still I, muted. <laughs> yeah, at least Frost I'm already muted. So that's fine, you know. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Double now we muted. Hear. All right, we're good, we're good. <laughs> uh, but I think <laughs> it's fine, you know. Just standard 
mid about broadcast choice, uh, you know exactly uh i think the you already hit on a lot of it it's just we're playing around the 2v2 right uh shade and Surdy played together uh towards the end of last split that pre-existing synergy coming in we see a lot of bias towards ganking top lane um Surdy always communicates very well effectively with the jungler talking yeah. about okay on this timing this dive is possible because i will play the lane this way right so he can always kind of force or, or set those situations up so it's very easy to, for junglers to plan pass around him um, and then of course you get the trademark tl uh coming back like jenkins has a lightning rod and trying to make it happen but you, you just can't outplay shaden when he's on kindred man he's he's too good and they they had one kill coming back but surdy turning the top play coming in with the Aatrox and suddenly, like you said, it's not two lanes of Pryo anymore. It's one lane of Pryo. Yeah. And then it's easy to make a collapse happen from that position. I mean, I, again, that top lane matchup for me is like what this game really boils down to because you want to have that solo lane strength to then kind of bridge the smolder to the lighter stages. And I got to say, I know that like you've talked a lot about Croc being big uh, for Smolder <laughs> teams, like, going into it. I've actually really liked the Croc pairing with Smolder specifically. Yep. Of course, that wasn't available to either team as this game goes forward, but it's because you have a way to make plays when you have a Smolder on your team. Because you can never look for plays bot with a Smolder. Like, you have to play yep. somewhere else. And Renekton not only is a great person to play around early, but also then doubles as that big front line for Smolder later on. Yep. Yeah, and that's, that's why I said, uh, you know, to me, when you're playing against or with a Smolder, the most important thing is that you're top side is strong because if your top side is strong you get to team fights and whoever's frontline lasts the longest with kind of the the, the adc versus adc situations Smolder can't hit if there's no one standing in front of him right he just dies instantly easy to collapse on him so um, i think it's great to see them playing like that you know we had uh Surdy hanging out in my chat the other time i said remember Surdy, if there's a smolder on the enemy team just tell them tell shaden to camp top and you know that's that's what happened here so i'm not taking credit or anything but uh you love it when a plan comes together <laughs> the pocket coach of kelsey <laughs> I mean, uh, Rocco's done a great job. Obviously, this team is popping off, and uh, we had, like, we, we get to see the Kindred. If we can't see the Nidalee, obviously, the, the Kindred is always a good time, so. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think it's been uh, a really good start here for FYC. I mean, we're just minutes away from them potentially booking their tickets through the stage. On the Riot Games Arena, which, of course, uh, you can find. Uh, I know that Desrex did a great job at advertising it. It's only five bucks. I Personally, I like how, Kelsey, you advertised it in an end game call. So, like, Don't. when everyone's really paying attention, <laughs> just a re reminder that, like, it's five bucks to watch games like these that uh, arguably are cleaner than the absolute wars that we've had in LCS playoffs this point. It's, it's been a, a, an absolute war oh, yeah. in, in the Pro Leagues, Kelsey. Here, it's a little bit more controlled, surprisingly enough. I mean, Fly C games definitely make it entertaining. I think yeah. uh, it's 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 great having a, a first place team like FlyQuest Challengers because they're definitely not the cleanest uh, closes in in the world. Or I mean, they could they can definitely run away with games where they snowball. But um, there's been a little bit of shenanigans in mid game, a lot of good play from TLC that we can see as well. So great to have a four game series. Great to have uh, TLC finding angles. I think. You always have to worry, even though there is a significant lead for FlyQuest Challengers right now, you always have to worry about that smolder just a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's, that's still an angle for a TLC to come back in the game on this one. Especially since you have like the, the Vi, you have the Blitzcrank. If you get the perfect Blitzcrank hook into the Kindred ult and then Vi lands on a target, you still have a winning team teamfight recipe for TL Challengers as the game goes on. So, Kelsey, I want to ask you a question uh, out of the series, technically. Um, when it comes to playing on stage, um, from the players you've worked with mm -hmm. in the past, what kind of experiences have they told you? Um, how, how has it changed the, uh, uh, the game for them? And almost everyone usually says that it's for sure different, right? Like, no matter, no matter how you boil it down, it's, it's always going to feel different. Uh, a lot of times, I think... It can be different good or different bad some players perform way better under pressure you know suddenly the the game feels just way more exciting way more fun you're pushed to to go for these lower probability plays because you sort of feel the crowd egging you on you feel the situation uh but then you you also have those players who 
are suddenly almost frozen. Like uh, they're paralyzed by indecision, I think. Uh, so it just depends on getting that experience. That experience is so important. So I'm I'm glad that we get the opportunity to have the the in-person challengers finals back and uh, ready to go. It's something specifically too, like even FlyQuest cited as a reason for why they got Quad. Because Quad was always the player when, especially when he was under the idea of Solko, like he played in LCK. And the rumor from him is that he was always a beast in scrims, but just couldn't bring it on stage. Kind of like what Quid had going for him for before this split, right? Where Quid really showed up. And that's why it's been great to see Quad and Challengers, like he is fearlessly making plays. I want to see that continue on stage uh, for the LCS. And it really is where you kind of find out what you're made of, right? I, I love like the, the cl uh, craps versus claps, right? He didn't like COVID because you were competing remotely. Like, he is definitely someone that has stated that he loves playing on the stage. It gives him focus and energy, and he wants to show up for the other people. And uh, I, I think it's something where if that's how you're going to compete at the highest level, getting on stage matters for these guys, especially early on in their career. And not to mention, it's a huge goal for all of them. So uh, it's really fun. All right. We are getting word that the game is ready to resume. So, Kelsey, thank you for joining us for this little break. But now it's time to get back into it. And, uh, of course, to update you all, FlyQuest have been dominating this game number yeah. four so far. 6.3K in the lead. Uh, it's seven, eight marks now on the Kindred, which is significant. And Jeez. we are 240 away from a potential soul for FlyC. Of course, there is a smolder on the other team. So you always have to be wary of that. I think FlyQuest challengers have a couple ways, though. You can really effectively play defense, Deserux. And I think it's going to be really tough for TLC. Yeah, they're still fighting for some potential control on the map. See, so came down right there over on the uh, Dragon Pit. The rest of TLC kind of uh, slowly guiding them towards that direction to make sure uh, no mishaps do come through. But even with that uh, uh, Baron Pit, excuse me, even with that ward uh, placed, still have that control ward that's denying that vision that uh, TLC are fighting for. Yeah, control wards are tough to clear against Blitzcrank as well, as you always have to be concerned about what's on the other side of the wall. Could be a rocket crab at the moment. Uh, curious enough, it's actually a blood song on Blitzcrank, so a real big focus from TLC on the picks and just really trying to one-shot whoever gets grabbed and pulled in. See right now that uh, FlyQuest are going to clear out that vision over towards uh, the Baron for the time being. One thing that uh, TLC have to keep a close eye on is going to be around this Baron pit. Uh, and a lot of that does come as we do see the Smolder has reached his breakpoint, got his stacks. A lot of that does come from the fact that you have a good amount of auto attackers on FlyQuest. If TLC disrespect the setup coming out from FlyQuest, they can snatch it pretty quickly. It's something where, I mean, you're just hoping that, you know, given how far we are into the game, you got the stats to kind of back at Deserux. And at the moment, I mean, we are one minute away from this dragon. I think all eyes have to go towards this. Azania is completed uh, for quad. I don't know if he popped the Seekers or not, but regardless, that's now a target that Vi can't go on. If Vi goes on no. Kindred, you get the Lambs Respite. There's an Edge Knight on Varus, so you got to uh, take that away before you can jump on that target. If you're going out on no. the Alistar, I think your team's going to tell you that you're trolling, and uh, there's even an Edge Knight now on Aatrox, so... It's so tough for Keel to actually pick oh. a target in here. It's really on TLC to try and burn any of these shields away before they can maybe find a hero engage from this Vi. It's been a fantastic job from FlyQuest to pretty much neutralize this Vi. Uh, even without just pure gameplay coming out, just the itemization alone is very, very impactful for this. And FlyQuest now having the inside track for the Dragon Pit as TLC start rotating around mid. I even love just how careful they're playing around the Dragon Pit as we do see the Evolve come in for the Smolder. That's an Edge of Night now taken away. Smolder is honestly the best way to take away some of these shields. Rocket grab, sidestep. As long as Shaden spotted, TLC knows that no one's going to be soloing the Dragon, but now they have full river control and FlyC will duck down here. Here we go. TLC are looking to contest this. Kim down leading the charge. It's gone. Weaver's wall goes up and the dragon's already taken. That's going to be Dragon Soul for FlyQuest. Kill is deep in the pit and down into his grave. He'll descend. Dirty. Now Jenkins trying to get away. Comes in with the Meganar ultimate, but Lamps Respite says no. You're not taking fights anytime soon. It's us who brought the heavy hands to the occasion and TLC will run. I mean, the, the dragon just melted TLC late to the party and now Surdy hunting. Jenkins will be spotted. No follow-up, though. We'll see how much Surdy wants to push this, because, of course, Baron is on the table. The DPS isn't on the Varus. It is on the Kindred. 
And there is no tank here right now for Fly C, so this will be started. Uh, we have a TP from Surdy, but the poke from Hoy is big. I think FlyQuest played a little bit too fast here. That, that was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is going to be a hard one to wait. take. They, they just have to completely bail out. Uh, keep in mind, loose. keep in mind, if they stood in there, you still have a Smolder, 225. That's a lot of executes waiting to happen. Yeah, not to mention the Hoy poke, which we saw being significant there from Romer. But, I mean, the Weaver's Wall is great. It cuts off the carries from the rest of the fight. Shime's just buying time. Heal is way too far deep. No one can follow up from the wall, and Shime survives because he's the Alistar. So uh, he ends up getting out in the end. Fly C just fine too. They find the dragon. That's all they wanted. No more blood. No more kills going over to the Smolder, which is very important because now, of course, Spawn has that evolve, has the RFC, and Spawn is that marksman that you know yep. we really saw him rise through the ranks in challengers when he was originally with Dignitas, given how well he plays team fights. We saw his Callista was fantastic in their win earlier. Uh, we even saw the Callista get them here as part of that series, and it looks like, unfortunately, we have another pause, Deserex. <laughs> uh, situations happen, and unfortunately, that's kind oh, of the uh, state of remote play that sometimes we're going to have some of these uh, technical mishaps. But uh, as it is right now, I was able to at least get a good screenshot of the scoreboard and just seeing how far ahead oh. this team has really become. Mechanics. I mean, it's it, it, it's four kills on every single carry. The front line is as beefy as you want them to be. This is perfect for FlyQuest. I mean, I like the fact that you took a screenshot of the pause because I had a tweet just yesterday of that AoE versus DSG series where game one, we saw DSG with about a 5k gold lead hitting a Baron around the 26 minute mark. And they lost it from there uh, against AoE. And what was a hero steal from Rosethorn. And then Zamudo simply walked yep. up and Empower auto attacked an Elder Dragon as the Aatrox, which beat a Spine. So... That was quite the game. Maybe TLC is trying to channel some of the pause energy that we've seen be very chaotic uh, throughout LCS, this split, and challengers. But maybe maybe you're moment. trying to steal the uh, Cloud9 strategy where first half of the split, they would only win if there was a pause in the game. I mean, Wixie and Breezy were C9 AM, so, you know, that's... We want to really dig deep there. Not to mention C9 training grounds that a lot of our players competed in at some point, so... Well, this is taking the wind out of our sails, unfortunately. Deserex, we, we we might need a hero to come in and save this, because this really feels like a one-sided game. The stakes are still high, but we just went through that in the last pause, which you were probably here for. Uh, if you are just joining us, it is 2-1 in favor of FlyQuest Challengers, and this game is four drakes and 8k gold in favor of FlyQuest Challengers. So uh, the only thing stopping us uh, from, you know, saying the fat lady singing is just a 225-stack smolder, yeah. which is a pretty powerful force, as we've seen. Yeah, um... Let's talk about the stats of pentakills, why don't we, Cubby? I mean, three times no. faster Smolder <laughs> you know, uh, was I, I, than I, all the other ADCs. I will say that me and one of the scouts for FlyQuest Empire, uh, we are, we've been calling... He's been calling Smolder pentakills fake, to which I agree. <laughs> and when Sajed got the Jinx pentakill in the first game, I said on broadcast, that's a real one, and his quote retweeted did as well. So, you know, that's that's big. <laughs> Uh, I like that we're gatekeeping pentakills now, Cubby. Uh, we are, because uh, you brought up the Sorry. stat, which is a reason to actually gatekeep it. It's too easy on this channel. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if you get the rest of the uh, package coming through. You got to get the girl bossing on as well, Cubby. So show that, okay. show that Smolder who's boss. Now, uh, TLC. <laughs> That's what Riot did in patch 14.6. Yes, yes. We can change the numbers. We're the real boss here. Put the stacks higher and higher. The only other Thanks. way to show Smolder who's boss is to play Silas and steal mom. <laughs> I've never really thought about that. That's actually kind of depressing. <laughs> Just yeah, getting team killed by your mom. Uh, I mean, no, it's 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 the stepdad. You know, that's 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 that's, that's Silas. Yeah, that's Silas all. <laughs> Quite the hijack. Anyway, we're gonna return this to normalcy. As Baron being cleared out. Yeah, we are 3:30 away from the elder. And again, Edge of Knights preventing Blitzcrank Vi from finding oh, no. any picks. It's oh, Shading no. going to look for a chunk. Ooh, Shading got a big chunk right there. He stalls the Lamster Spite to protect him if the engage is found by TLC. Uh -oh. Kills in there, and Jenkins is out. Kill tries to Ooh. find the kill against Shaden, but he says, nah, uh, not today. The top side of the map is dead for TLC, and FlyQuest have an angle on Baron. Decent try from Keel, as we do have the flash burn. Quad's dead. Ooh, Quad 
Oh, no, he's not. Sanya's. No, he's not. He's got an hourglass. Romer's still going to look for the finish, yeah. and he finds it. It's a shutdown, but Baron still belongs to FlyQuest. And Chimes looking for more fights, looking for more engages. Romer gets caught by the Darkened Blade, and there's Sajed finds it right on the money, an arrow through the dome, and FlyQuest come up big. 10k gold, a Baron to boot to set up for this Elder Dragon, and inner turrets to fall. FlyQuest challengers take even further control of this game. It starts with Shaden stepping up onto Spawn, so he gets the flap, flap out, chunks him out. Wad's able to get in here, and look at Spawn. He's only able to cast ult. He doesn't have the health to even step up. The front line goes down early for TLC. He'll try to boop Shaden back into the center. A mom wasn't quite able to get it, so Shaden survives. Yeah, in the back half, Quad falls, but still, that's a Baron for FlyQuest challengers. They will much rather have that than they are up at this point of the game. And Chimes even able to find another one in the back half. So again, FlyQuest challengers, I, I really like how aggressive Shaden is playing on this Kindred in the Smolder. Definitely is a pick that challengers has very much been experimenting with. This is an answer in the Smolder. Kindred, I would say, is one of the CEOs of Challenger, uh, along with, you know, Seraphine Jinx and a couple others that we've seen have a very high win rate in this league, not just this split, but historically... Jaden's been playing out really well this game, and TLC feels like they're on their last breath. Jeez. A piercing arrow from Sajed, and Kim Downs lost a third of his health. Surdy playing to the side lanes now, while the rest of FlyQuest bounce, uh, yeah. dance between both mid and bottom. You have a side lane setup coming up from Quad, who is uh, shoving in that wave over in the top lane. But right now, the map belongs to FlyQuest. And, and just to further back, Kindred, uh, Kindred is six, <laughs> six and three in regular season and 5-0 and here in playoffs, looking to go 6-0 here for Shaden. So this has really been a big pick that we have seen emerge later in drafts where some of the tools are down. Uh, like, you don't want to play Kindred into a Talia. I feel like this pairing was great for FlyC, and the fact that they've used their Talia game here in Game 4, I think, was also very significant. As obviously, yeah. this is a very powerful champion that we have right now in the meta. They found a great game for it. Uh, denying it from Smolder. Uh, DLC picked a Game 1, so it was already denied, but still. Playing it into Smolder, I think, is really good because you're going to attack it. And it buys a lot of space for Kindred. And what could be the closing moments coming up soon? We got 30 seconds until the Elder Drake spawns. And already the resets have been found by FlyQuest. They're coming onto the map and they're looking for TLC to step a little bit too far forward. Kill has to bail. Here comes Surdy. Cease and desist. Finds an angle on the Surdy. Oh, but no. he cuts him down anyway. Puts the sword right through the heart. And TLC now on retreat. Spawn looking for the execution, but Lamb's respite will deny any of that. And FlyQuest. They're able to find kill. And look at that Elder Drake. It looks so tasty. And you can see the play pattern of Kindred into Smolder. It is simply Q forward. Trade the damage. Use Lamb's Respite so the Execute can't come in. And Smolder gets forced out. You are gated by range. Everyone from TLC didn't have the health bars to continue. And FlyQuest Challengers will use that Baron to set up their waves. Use the 10k Goldie they had to make sure they can chunk out TLC before they can even contest Elder. And Elder's now secured. And again, this game... Looking like it's going to book FlyQuest Challengers tickets to the Riot Games Studios here in LA. Absolute damnation coming out from FlyQuest. They couldn't even grab Surdy on the back yeah. half of that. Because you look at the time, it's 8 Surdy and he's going to whoop ass. I mean, the control here for FlyC making it so hard for TLC to even get into River. The smite comes in to make sure this can connect. But Surdy was able to sneak in an auto attack. That goes down. That's a big auto attack on the Kim down as well. As he loses half his health to that empowered one from Aatrox. Yeah, Shaden with the help of Sajed. Big Q just forces spawn all the way out to get both the summoner spells off Smolder, and that's going to make this last push quite easy, having a somewhat Smolder against an Elder Empowered FlyQuest Challengers. Top lane siege. Now starting off for FlyQuest, and there's not much TLC can really do about it. They're still looking for the Blitzcrank hooks. That's one of the few windows they really have back into this. Just a simple pick with that, but they can't even. Uh, find the angle because FlyQuest are leading with the cow, and that's the last champion you want to grab. Yeah, that cow answer, really strong this game. From Chime, again, Chime's cow, I forgot how good it was back from his time in GG. We've only seen it a couple times this split, but it's been great. Chime looking to finish up this one as Mom comes in just to clear the wave and protect the turret. Will not be available for the next push. Yeah, yeah it's only that's... Chime's second Alistar of the split. It's, he's a damn good Alistar, you know? I usually think of Breezy in this league when I think of Alistar, but Chime giving me a lot of reasons to think of him as well as Weaver's Wall coming in. All right, FlyQuest going in. They're looking for the closing statements in this game four. 
Oh, Their Poker ticket to Alvin. Los Angeles almost booked as they take down one of the Nexus, uh, one of the inhibitor, one of the inhibitors, excuse me, already too hyped up on this game so far. And now they'll put their sights onto the top lane. So Shad all, all goes wide, so Chain of Corruption is not available. As you can see, uh, there's a reason that Elder Dragon has the execute that it does, and Smolder doesn't have the one that, uh, you know, Elder has. <laughs> it's a smaller dragon. Threshold a lot higher here for Fly C, but not enough for them to actually push too far into Smolder. And again, there's now four items on the Smolder. Importantly, Spawn will have Flashback up for the next fight. But Fly C wants to reset and make sure they can have a clean setup around this Baron. As long as they deny vision, it's very tough for TLC to walk into them. They're not messing around right now. They want to do this in a clinical way and not allow any windows of opportunity for TLC to come back. They grab the inhibitor in the mid lane. That's good enough. They see that Baron timer. It's time to back off and secure that while all this pressure is really starting to add up to TLC's base. So tough for TLC to walk in. Keel as the uh, might be face checking Sajed here as at least the blue trinket gets him off. But Romer has 30. a flash that's going to be forced. Yeah, he gets caught by the yeah. chains, has to flash away to get out. Chain of Corruptions almost land onto him, so uh, would have been a hellish amount of CC for him to deal with. Now FlyQuest starting up the Baron. That's a lot lower cooldown than the Chain of Corruptions, which might be back up for the post-fight. Baron at half. Keel will get in here. All right, Chime's going to be spotted out. Hexflash comes in. He's going to be able to pull in, and it's a kill on a kill. Chime's okay. He's got oh. his ultimate burning away, and the seismic shove will pull TLC to their demise. FlyQuest, the team, is unbreakable, undeniable. The best damn team in the league. They fly, they soar, they take it all the way to space, man, and they're about to land an orbital drop kick onto TLC. And they're about to land themselves in LA on April Fools as they look to be booking their ticket to the Riot Games Arena here, Desirex, to compete for the Challengers League Finals. Nexus Tower number one goes down. Looking to bail. They'll take down the cow, but can you take down the rest of the force? A fly quest. Fly quest will take to the skies one more time. Destination Los Angeles. Big win from Fly Quest Challengers. They find the 3 1 and. I feel like this series was a lot closer than what the 3-1 will say at the end of the day. As I, TLC, again, really the was. first three games, they took five out of the six Nexus turrets. They had two pushes where it felt like they could have won the game in games that they did not win. But Fly C were able to turn things around. TLC got their heads get a little bit over their skates. And FlyQuest Challengers, I mean, this is a team. They're a great team fighting force. I think we really saw that shine later on. And that last game, that was the one game that we saw that was very dominant for them from start to finish. Yeah. Uh, and I, I feel like, especially Surdy with some of that waning man against Jenkins. I mean, Jenkins Nara is damn good. Surdy removed TP. He removed Flash. He called his buddies. It was a lead in the top side, and FlyQuest Challengers really ran with things from there. Yeah. And uh, by the way, Kindred, 14 stacks at the end of it from Shaden. Goodness gracious, that was a Kindred clinic. Sheesh. But, uh,. Yeah, FlyQuest able to take it. TLC oh so close multiple times. Again, that could have been a 3-0 for TLC. Two games getting flipped back to FlyQuest, but they do have a second chance in that lower bracket finals. But for now, got to feel good for FlyQuest. We're going to throw it over a short break. When we return, we'll have Kelsey Moser on the other side with an interview with uh, one of the members of the victorious FlyQuest. Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. Try the warm and delicious footlong cookie, footlong pretzel, or footlong churro.
Welcome back to the broadcast. We're lucky enough to be joined for the first time by the victorious mid laner for FlyQuest Challengers. Quad, Quad, great games. I want to ask, um, in game three specifically, on Nico, you had a game-winning TP flank. Uh, how did you call and set up that play with your team? Um, game three is really hard to play game because um, uh, we don't have bio many rain pace. It is really hard and hard to play win this game. We need to uh, play... I, I, I want to find word. Uh, variable. We need a variable. And time, he know this and he make a behind TP and make a vision. Only, on, only oh, he make this. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Wow, great to hear. We've heard a lot about Chime's leadership, but it also seems in general like you guys played uh, a few games from behind, you know? You had some drafts where you have losing lanes, but yeah. you seem to have good mental, you stay focused. Uh, who kind of in comms is helping you guys stay focused or find uh, comeback op opportunities? Uh, I think game three uh, bottom play is um, our mental is so bad because uh, really I think really hard to <laughs> win this game. Just uh, just we <laughs> keep playing, just we uh, just we keep playing, but try make a good bar. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, I, I, I appreciate the honesty. That was a really tough game, <laughs> uh, watching you guys yeah. play that one out. Um, but it was a big turning point. Uh, I, I do want to ask you personally, uh, you know, you came over to NA, uh, and I, I've seen some of your play from, you know, LCK and even LCK Challengers, but this year, what are you working on improving personally while you play for FlyQuest Challengers? Um, I think I want to uh play focus on lane page because um, when i was mm. in lck and lck um, many people say my lane page is so bad i think i'm really don't agree this and i wanna uh, solve this problem yes <laughs> oh and it definitely doesn't seem like you have a problem with laning here so <laughs> we'll we'll say that for sure yeah, um, yeah. But <laughs> uh, I also want to say, because I know that you hit rank one in NA yes. while you were here. Uh, so uh, everyone always wants to know, you know, what's the difference, biggest difference between NA and Korean solo queue from your from your perspective? Um, I think um, Korean solo queue is um, play like Scream. They only uh, have many pro gamers. But here solo queue is a uh, don't have many pro player and um, mm -hmm. many fight. <laughs> it is really <laughs> big difference. And so yeah. I can uh, understand here people. I hear pro player why don't play solo queue. I can understand this. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey Quad, you guys just beat TLC to make finals. They, of course, have to now go through the lower bracket and have the chance to get back. Um, do you think that you will play TLC again in finals? Um, I think so. TLC must... Uh, uh, not must uh, TLC can come into final because in NHL, have only two Korean, right? Uh, and uh, Romo is um, best, but not better than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great, great to hear. Uh, got a slight rivalry, not really, because you're clearly better. Um, but uh, you've been kind of by yourself, uh, other than Rocco in the the FlyQuest facility. But obviously, they'll all come out to play the final. So, is there anything that you want to do with your teammates uh, while they're in LA with you? Um. I don't think it, uh, I, uh, I don't know, just uh, give a win final. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, good answer. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a good one, Quad. Hey, Quad, I just wanted to say thank you again so much for joining us. It's been really fun hearing from you. 
Uh, is there anyone you want to say thank you to or anything you would like to say to your fans before you play in finals? Mm. Uh, first, I want to say to Romer because um, I I may post in Twitter uh, to Romer a good long SMS, but he said uh, it will be easy game. <laughs> but <laughs> you, you already know um, I was a SK player and he was a SKCF player. I'm better than him and when I meet final, I can win him again. Awesome. Right, well, nice. uh, Quad, uh, comes to me now. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, oh, and, oh sorry. Uh, uh, I, I want to uh, talk to my fan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching my match and thank you for rooting for us. Uh, see you at final. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Quad, it's so great hearing from you. Thanks for taking an interview in English. You, you were awesome, and, and come to me now. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah now I, I'm going to be joined again by Tesserex uh, to walk out the day. I, actually, you know, usually we end the day here, but we actually have more games coming up, Tesserex, yeah. as we have a best of three. It was supposed to be played yesterday between Maryville and Fear. We will be uh, broadcasting that match right after this best of five. You'll be joined by Mazel and Joshi for that one. Uh, but before we dive in, let's take a look at the bracket. And Deserux, uh, do you have any thoughts about that interview from Quad? I just want to say props to Quad for taking that in English. His English okay, is yeah. awesome. Yeah, that, that, that's that was, what it is. Yeah, the, taking it, it in English, it was so heartwarming, but also the man is ready for trash talk. I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> <laughs> throwing so much shade for sure. over to Rover. Uh, it definitely sets up what could be a pretty interesting uh, scenario for the finals. If TLC are able to make it through and we get to see the rematch happen once again. I mean, it was great hearing from him. Obviously, he's been a big highlight of the broadcast and everything going on. I think uh, even, you know, uh, apparently he, he sort of asked him, how do you hit rank one? And he says, oh, you just you just play and you get there. And then it was great. <laughs> it was great hearing him say, you know, um, it was great hearing him say, I don't understand why do pro players not play solo queue? Because obviously it echoes a lot of sentiments that oh, we hear all the time. And um, it's great to see him play it's great to see FlyQuest challengers succeeding so looking forward to seeing them in finals in person get your tickets now yep of course just five dollars it's the day right after <laughs> finals for lcs which is april 1st on a monday you're at the right arena to watch playoff finals anyway for lcs stay one more day man just stay one more day but we do need to start wrapping up here so i'm gonna throw it over to you real quick kelsey uh do you have yeah. any shout outs because uh we definitely appreciate your presence here and all the knowledge you brought to the desk yeah um thanks so much for having me on and and also letting me join the TriCast. Of course, you can follow me. Uh, my Twitter's on, on there. I also stream, co-stream most Challengers matches. Uh, if you want to just come to and chat LPL. and hang out. Yeah, I also co-stream LPL. So, you know, I will, I will also monkey. say, people think that NACL copies FPX because they pick Kindred after Milky Way. But in fact, Kindred was the original CEO of NACL. So if anything, Milky True. Way <laughs> is copying Challenger Series. So that's it's it's just twelve and three. How to get that one? Split, Kelsey. Yeah, exactly. Kindred's twelve and, and three. It's massive. It, I'm pretty it's sure the it was the most. Again, man. Pretty sure it was the most banned champ in summer last year as well. So yeah. Um, and thank Kindred. you, Shaden, and uh, for that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But we gotta move on. So off that note, yeah. uh, my name has been Desrix. This has been Kelsey Moser, as well as Matthew Cubby Samuelson. Please stick around because we got another series coming up. Technical issues plagued us yesterday, so we're gonna have Fear versus MU right after this break. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you in. Well, a couple of minutes, you won't see our face. You'll see Mazel and Joshi, but yeah, stick around. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long. Or a churro, and probably not a pretzel either. They also said under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new Footlong Sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. Welcome one and all to Gamer Changer. Our contestants will be answering four statistical questions about the league with two additional fun questions added on. 
all of our wonderful contestants will be competing for their chance to make the NACL casters produce any content that they would like. Let's get to it, shall we? Question 1. Who has the most kills in the league? So it's either Wixie on Smolder at 15, or he's tied with uh, mid laner at 15 as well. That was playing his ear. You're so I, reasonable. It's gotta be like quad, bro. Yeah, that's who I was thinking as well. I remember there was a 30 game where at least at some point he was 10 0 3. Oh, we should have checked the stat size before this. Byrex is here. That is a bias. I mean, I'm, I, mean I play with Wixie too, we're double biased. No, I don't, I don't even know this Byrex guy. Like, I actually think it would be like a lower team. The higher teams don't even give kills. Like, I watched Sided take like five kills on Poppy. Right. It's gonna be 30 then. Oh, oh I knew god. it. I knew it. Oh my god. <laughs> I think it's Rock Boom. Is it right? Uh, let's just do Ixy Smolder at 15. I knew it was, I said, I told you it was a Zier mid. I told you. Why'd you say Spyrax? Why'd you say Spyrax? Who has the top KDA in the league? Well, it's gotta be a Maryville or FlyQuest player. I played with Yuji and he's the biggest KDA player of all time. You know this, Max. Yuji or Scary Jerry? Junglers have to die for the boys all the time. It can't be a jungler. I feel like it's Scary Jerry. He's been popping off this. Uh, I haven't watched this, uh, many Maryville games at all. Wait, think about Fly. I mean, I would say Quad, but then Quad had an int game on a Zier. Oh, I, uh, I want to say Array. He's uh, eating carry on a top Three, on top I mean, three team. I mean, yeah. Are we locking? We locking? All right. Bro, I, I told you it was AD carrier. That doesn't three. matter. <sighs> you got this one. Okay, Jerry, 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 Jerry. Okay. Let's go with the Rock Raga's answer here. All right. Scary Jerry? Oh, I got it. <laughs> Maybe no. I'm the brains, Dragoon. I thought you yeah. were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who has the most solo kills in an ACL? Quacker. No, last split it was Quacker. It's either 30 or Quad. But I mean, Yelling. Quacker is still solo killing, though. Like, low key. No, he's not. No, he's not. He is. I don't think it's like Quad Well, it has to be a top lane. Oh, it has to be a top lane. I would say Surdy, but the thing is, there's that like one Rumble game it's against like Philip Sion. He like started off the game with like eight deaths. That could be genius. I think it's Surdy or Quad. That's my answer. What's what's your answer? Going Quacker still. Like okay, okay. We, we we choose Quacker. Oh my god. I think Surdy's good. I th I think it has to be. It is Surdy. Wait, Wait, when did he solo kill against us? Like, did he even solo kill against us? Do you just go with Surdy? <gasps> Oh, he was just farming his solos. What was the longest game of the split? We had the longest game, though. Was it versus uh, Fly? I think it was, no, it was versus TL, no? Wasn't it ours? Oh, the did fear game? Did we get to a game with three, infer three elders? I think it was two elders. Wait, wait, wait. There was a fear versus TL game that, like, oh. went crazy. Wait, no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, fear versus... No, fear versus lit. Yeah. Like Aphelios, I remember Aphelios Lulu. I think we have it. I think Fear has the longest game. It was more than 45. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I knew it. No, yeah, I know we I had mean, it. Dude, you know why? I know we had it. It's our head coach. We lost. Everyone's depressed. And then in the bottom of our Discord, Cow just posted a screenshot of, at least we have the longest game in the season, guys. I'm like, bro, why are you posting this? We lost. Why are you? This is not a flex. I mean, yeah, that, that game was. Okay, all right. Fear versus Lit. Bro, I said it! You want to just slam our game? I think it was our game. Yeah. That's a tough question. Oh, That's a tough yeah. Question. yeah. Act out your favorite champion. Your duo must guess who it is. No. We have to like do charades. Um, no, this is easy, Philip. I already have my answer. You'll 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 guess it instantly. Oh, I have a good one. I have a good one. I'll go first. Right. Can I use like props already? It's legit. It's legit. Wait, he already knew before. <laughs> you're gonna guess it instantly. If you don't, you're you're banned. You're just okay. Banned. Okay. Graves. Ding ding ding. <laughs> is that Thresh, bro? Yes, yes, it is. I got the hook. Oh, wait, and no, then I play. Okay, okay. Wait, okay. this one's so easy. Philip, Philip, I know what you should do, Philip. All right, all right, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Player. Yeah. Smother, yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready, Max? Yeah. Wukong R. Boom, yeah. Wukong R. Boom. Oh, wait, come on. That, we are the best at that. Oh. <gasps> Ganked my mom. What is it called? Hot cocoa? <laughs> Is that Malphite? No, man! We saw we set, set, set! Yes, yes. Uh, why'd you clap like that? When you're like punching, I'm like, oh, he's doing set, and then you just clap. I'm like, huh? Let's calculate points, shall we? We have lit with two points, fear with three points, and wild card with three points. Wait, we have a tie? And we have our winners! Congratulations to Cincinnati Fears, Chad and Philip for winning, and thanks for tuning in to Gamer Changer.